Start close in. Start close in. Don't take the second step or the third. Start with the first thing close in, the step you don't want to take. Start close in. Don't take the second step or the third. Start with the first thing close in, the step you don't want to take. Start with the ground you know, the pale ground beneath your feet, your own way to begin the conversation. Start with your own question. Give up on other people's questions. Don't let them smother something simple. To hear another's voice, follow your own voice. Wait until it becomes an intimate, private ear that can then really listen to another. Start right now. Take a small step you can call your own. Don't follow someone else's heroics. Be humble and focused. Start close in. Don't take the second step or the third. Start with the first thing. Close in. The step you don't want to take. There is that uh, old cliche that the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. So we often think it's the first step forward, the first step onto the ground, but actually that first step is probably the first step into your own body, down into the body that's going to make the first outer step. That the real ground from which we stand uh, lies... uh, beneath this inner, deep but dazzling darkness that Henry Vaughan in the 1600s described. Deep because it's foundational, dazzling because it's difficult to get below. To begin with, it reflects your surface personality. And the way down beneath this deep but dazzling darkness, the way down into the body is not through a willful uh, attempted entrance, but through a radical kind of undoing, of letting yourself alone, of letting your fretting and worrying and naming at the periphery fall away so that some other music can be played and heard at the center. Start close in. Don't take the second step or the third. Start with the first thing, close in, the step you don't want to take. Another spiritual cliche inherited from the Tibetan tradition is first thought, best thought. Except that what we think is our first thought is often our twelfth or thirteenth thought, actually, that has been processed through various layers of interpretation and worry and fret and fear. And the first thought is probably, almost by definition, one that we're afraid of. It's the doorway to our freedom, and quite often we've locked that door from the inside. And we've made ourselves a little prison in order to stay exempt and immune from the pains and difficulties of our previous life. So often in childhood we're besieged or bullied by people or by circumstances or we're not loved in the way we want it to be loved or we feel we're not in the right family that is able to see us and hear us. Yeah, And so quite often the time of trauma in childhood involves a a form of wall building and of abstraction from the center of the body. The center of the body that felt the pain and the difficulty and the not wantedness in the first place. Yeah. So quite often uh, the ability to take the first step is the ability to step down into a place that first first of all represents our pain and our grief. Not from any puritanical necessity, but just because that's where we first walked out of the body in the first place. And now we have to walk back into it. 
that threat may have gone away. That sense of, sense of, of not being wanted may have gone away. That sense of being bullied may have disappeared on the outside. But we formed our character ar- around it so assiduously that we actually still keep the walls, still keep the sense of abstraction in the fear of it coming back. Or in elaborate circumstances, we manufacture the bullying circumstances. We imagine we're being bullied just in order to keep ourselves uh, assured in the identity that we built so assiduously over the years. So almost by definition, the courageous conversation, the heartfelt conversation, is the one we don't want to have. And sometimes you can actually identify the courageous conversation precisely by asking the question, what is the question I don't want to ask? What is the conversation I don't want to have? Who is the person that makes me feel most vulnerable and afraid? And the lovely thing about conversation is that we don't have to have it all at once. All we have to do is turn our face towards it. All we have to do is to take the first step. All we have to do is to start close in. Start close in. Don't take the second step or the third. Start with the first thing close in, the step you don't want to take. Start with the ground you know, the pale ground beneath your feet, your own way to begin the conversation, your own way to begin the conversation. Start with your own question. Give up on other people's questions. I always say it's quite remarkable how many questions that are not our own are living inside our bodies. Uh, When in your educational life did you ever get rewarded for not knowing? Almost always, uh, we were forced into manufacturing answers that we thought someone else wanted. And we neglected our own question in the midst of it, which always authentically begins in not knowing. So we substitute an easy answer over the necessary not knowing that is the real hallway to getting to know. Start with your own question. Give up on other people's questions. Don't let them smother something simple. To hear another voice, follow your own voice. Wait until it becomes an intimate, private ear that can really listen to another. I often think we're not really listen to it, listening to another person at the periphery because we're in competition with them. But when you are dropped to a place in your art form, if you're a musician, you know, with your guitar, uh, if you are a uh, poet with your writing, if you're a painter, if you drop down to the very frontier of your art form, this is a place of no competition. There are no other musicians in the world except ones to collaborate with. There are no other poets in the world except to co-celebrate the world which you inhabit because your voice, your way of playing, your artistry is absolutely and completely unique. To hear another's voice, follow your own voice. Wait until it becomes an intimate private ear that can then really listen to another. Start right now. Take a small step you can call your own. Don't follow someone else's heroics. Start right now. Take a small step you can call your own. Don't mistake that other for your own. Start close in. Don't take the second step or the third. Start with the first thing, close in. The step you don't want to take. Start close in from River Flow. <laughs>